They don't know you personally. Don't take it personally. Okay, oh, so let's I'm bring you in. So now, Matt, is it okay if I go through the computer audio, or would you rather I go through the phone audio? What is happening? Did I did I lose it? Yeah. Computer, please. He said, "Computer, please." Okay. Now I see you over there, Jerry. You good? Now, everybody, I'm okay. going to need Jeff. Thank you for that thumbs up because I want to make sure that everybody, you know, we're doing this. Listen, Jerry, I'm going to be real about the, you know, learning curve. Mm -hmm. you no, know, I mean, it is a real thing where we're trying to coordinate all of these discussions and have it reach as broad of an audience as possible on as many platforms as possible. And, you know, I'm working with this incredible company called Nord S, which is who Matt is. It's just like, hmm. you make it, they make it seem like it's just a boop, 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 but it's like code and it's practically, yes. I mean, this and curing cancer, those will be like the two things that our generation accomplishes. I'm calling it. Not bad. Oh, and <laughs> Oh yeah, we're gonna are we gonna cure racism in all this? Yeah, I really hope. I think that's what we're gonna do. By the end of the night, like in an hour, like in fifty five minutes, done. All it took was these queens to get around the table and talk. So. <laughs> okay. Now speaking of uh, royalty, I also had the lovely Blake Pouillot on uh, Monday, and then you sent me a screenshot of him playing with you. You guys all created together. Well, at the Junos, yeah. Last year um, was in London, the Junos. And um, yeah, it just kind of, it was the perfect swirl of, uh, of, of happy mistakes and, and, and circumstances that brought us together. And it was so beautiful, the collaboration that we got. Did you get to talk to him about race? Oh yeah, he was Monday. Oh. So he came on on Monday and we had Mikhail Jean, the former governor general last night. Mm -hmm. And you're our final, the final in the seven. And I say our, cause it, I mean, it's like me, it's just me. But you know, it takes a village. So I have to love on, you know, the people at Nordes, but also like Guillermo Sebaste and like Lena Baudin and like, Jay Vernon, like people who step into the gap where you're like super not qualified, <laughs> but you still have to be the face of the thing. Yeah. Oh, isn't that, isn't, are you feeling that right now? Are you feeling that right now? I'm, I've definitely felt I mean, that at, at times in my life. I was my car on the old one highway in the Annapolis Valley in Nova Scotia. <laughs> because the internet connection in my house will not support this kind of bandwidth. It like this is the bandwidth we're about to pick up. So, hey, <laughs> I love you. So much. You know, I only was brought into your orbit through Tanya Breen. The queen of the Frederick and Tanya Breen. Breen, Breen. Tell me how you know, sweet dear Tanya. I met Tanya when I was really young. So I, I was part of the Theater to Brunswick Theater School. I was a little, little theater boy growing up. The theater was like a, you know, for somebody that didn't fit in. It was a place where the, the weirdos were collected and we came together and we told stories to each other and we played games and we, you know, we said yes and. So she was one of these theater mentors, uh, one of the teachers in that program. Um, and I remember I was, put, we, were, we were doing a summer production and we were doing like a scenes show. So there was a bunch of different shows, but there was one from Jesus Christ Superstar. And it was my first time on stage. And um, I was too nervous and I didn't want to go out. And I was in the back shaking and, and I'll never forget Tanya Breen, she came up to me and she said, don't forget, honey, this isn't about you. 
You know, we got all those people out there, you know, waiting for you to tell a story and you got to go do it, you know? And yeah, I, I mean, that, that for an adult to take that time and look at me and to humble me enough and hold mm. me in it and to say that like, mm -mm. Mm. it was really and powerful and it was, it was transformative for me. Do you know the singer-songwriter David Miles? Yeah, I do. He's critical <laughs> too. <laughs> I'm in the water, eh? His father, Jim Miles, may he rest in perfect, eternal, transcendent peace, was mm -hmm. my very first director for my very first role on stage in high school. I played, oh wait, if you have headphones, can you make sure they are plugged into the laptop? It is minor, but would help. Well, that's what Matt is saying to the people. The laptop. Um, I do not have headphones. So I can... Okay, I'm going to rush and get mine. I'll be right back, okay? In the meantime, I will tell the story of Jim Miles. Because if there's anybody from Fullerton who is watching this, or, you know, just under the sound of my voice, you need to know that Mr. Miles directed the High School Musicals. And my first musical was playing half of the role of the narrator in Joseph and the Amazing Technicolor Dreamcoat with Tara Martin as the other. And Jim Miles was the director. And how I, why I was telling the story is because Jeremy was like, it was a really humbling thing what Tanya Breen said to him about he had a responsibility to the audience. And I was um, the type of, let's say, child prodigy that sometimes needed to be checked. But mm -hmm. I would say in my 30-year career, I have really needed to be checked maybe thrice. If once was by Jim Miles and I was just being late and he just told me it was an accident. You were saying you disrespect um, the process, you disrespect. You know, and I was like, I never thought about my, you know, punctuality as being a reflection of my, you know, respect for people. And I'm still not great at being on time. Okay, let's be real. But I have started every single one of these chats at eight on the dot. And I have been very respectful of your time because I said you, I, I said I would do a thing and I like to do what I say I'm going to do, but I'm not perfect. And in that instance, you know, I was really checked uh, on, on the issue of, of punctuality. So if I am late, which I mean, it's not, not often, but <laughs> I am very apologetic because I do realize that people's time is as valuable as mine. And mine isn't even as valuable as sometimes the time that I'm being given. Do you know what I mean? Like, mm -hmm. which is my roundabout way of thanking you for being here, Jim. Oh, I'm so happy to be here. This is honestly a conversation that um i had hoped to have and I'm, I'm sad we have to do it in the context of people losing their life and you know um but it's it's ultimately a really generative time i think yes now i have titled this chat the final of seven race in canada and we you were always the seventh even last week as i was conceiving of these talks you were one of the very first people i called and I was like, and you were like, yes. I mean, claro que sí. And the first time that I reached out to you, because we got we we were on Tanya Brain, right? Because she deserves homage. But it was like, she introduced. She said, I I had a. I was trying to conceive of what my next album was going to be, but I needed something that would tie songs together, and I wanted to have it be born of. It was the Songs of Freedom album. Oh my God, Sons of, sorry, Nisha, Sons of Freedom, I just have to like, it was so good. <laughs> did you and catch I, the Lauren Hill? Did you catch the Lauren Hillness of it? It's oh, undeniable. It's like, well, yeah, right? it's a, it's a real album. story, you know? Should, and I think. Thank you. Go, you go. I just, I had to, I had to say, because it was such that album really like, because it was such a story and journey, it allowed me to see your journey, you know? And anyway, uh, as part of this big history, right? And I think that's what we're doing as artists, we're putting 
ourselves into our context and painting that for people. And you did that well, in a really beautiful way. Your artistry, isn't it? I mean, that's a perfect spring off question because that whole question of origin and of placement, tell me how that factors in and, and, and how it contextualizes where we are. Well, I, I never really set out to make any specific kind of music. It just kind of, when I sat down at a piano or started to, to make voice, you know, it just felt like a kind of voice that, or in a kind of song that, that I wasn't hearing, you know? And um, I started to investigate why that was and why our classical music institutions weren't, you know, they weren't holding our stories. And yeah, I, I guess I just started to witness that dearth that existed um, in how our stories are told and who gets, you know, what audiences get what kind of stories. And um, I think indigenous stories are really important. And for a long time, they've been told on the other side of us. So more of like people looking towards native people and you know, theorizing about, oh, this must mean that and all this without actually asking us. You're so, like, um, right here, super yeah, right here. Yeah, <laughs> you know? totally. And why do I feel like I, I can't raise my hand? Like, why is my voice not actually a part of this discussion? You know, and it felt like these songs that I grew up around hearing were an important piece of the puzzle that, you know, when we talk about something as broad as Canadian music, um, and, and only certain voices get included within that canon. And so I think it's really important to always insert, um, you know, indigenous narratives are a complication. They complicate our idea of, uh, of place and space and what is ours. And I think um, that can challenge people. You know, and I've definitely experienced that in, in good, getting to go around and share my work. It challenges people. But I think that challenge is the space for um, generative growth and, and really important conversations. What I love about that challenge and the imperative to create a space that allows for that creativity as it is unique to you to grow and flourish and become something new and something that isn't currently in the canon. What is beautiful about that is that when I'm approaching you, trying to feel like, you know, the first our first interaction was I was trying to find a song that I felt was either something that could marry the malice of our origins with the meanness of my origins and just trying to figure out if that's a doable thing. And Tanya Breen said, Jeremy Dutcher is the person to talk about that. And when I reached out to you about something specific, I'm super, I'd really love to have you unpack your answer, right? Because what is that sound? Do you hear that high? No, no, sound? It's me and you. It's gone. Okay. <laughs> that was like you an have angel. To the sound. It just wants to be it wants to be witnessed. <laughs> I love that. I was like, I hear you. now can I just talk about the text message that mm -hmm. just came in from Michael Wilson Thomas that said, Call me, loved this conversation. Now I, love I don't know what conversation Michael Tilson Thomas is talking about. But it's enough for me that he has sent me a text. <laughs> and you have to understand, I'm like hardcore name dropping here because this is a man who was just given the Kennedy Center honors with like Gloria Estefan and Earth, Wind and Fire, oh, right? This is the 25th celebration of his, you know, being the music director of the San Francisco, San Francisco Symphony, founder of the New World Symphony. Like, and this man is just like texting me and he's like, uh, call me. Loved this conversation. <laughs> I don't know what he's talking about. Whatever. Take the take it. Give him a call. The universe is pulling you some kind of. Okay. You had me. I, back. me. I love it. So that's how I feel yeah. like when you text me. I'm like, Misha, just text me. I start. I call. I tell everyone. I'm a <laughs> um, okay. Right. So, I mean, when you had reached out. That time, I, I I had obviously known who you were and was very familiar with your work. Um, 
and was totally stoked to hear from you. I thought, oh my God, amazing. You know, this like, and then, you know, there was something you, you had, you had wondered about, you know, including because New Brunswick, you know, this territory is such a big part of your family story. You know, I thought it was such a beautiful idea to include, you know, music from this place. You know, what is the, what are the songs that spring from this land? Um, and I thought that impulse was so beautiful. And yet there was a tension in me as well, because, um, you know, in terms of like how our songs are taught, um, it's really about relationships, you know? And at that time, we didn't, you know, we didn't necessarily have that, uh, that kind of uh, relationship where I felt comfortable just to give a song because a, a song for us is more than, you know, just something we sing. It's for us because, you know, we had we have many different ways of being, um, but one of them, you know, our written language is just a very recent, um, maybe in the last thirty years, and so you know, song played that role as law, and it 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 carried with it uh, so much meaning about where we are and where we come from, and there's so much context that goes with it. So you know, to I, I want that context to be honored every time it, our, those kind of songs are shared. And you know, um, that's not to say that somebody outside of our community could never honor that song in that way. But you know, for me personally to go and to give that song to somebody else, I, I then give that that law, that message away, and 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 somebody else is able to interpret that. So I think for me, you know, that's not to say we'll never work together because I know that's not true. Oh, but, I know that's not true. Don't. Yeah, speak that word. Got back in the pit where it belongs. But you know, just at that time, it was an important, I think, boundary for me to set around. You know, our song and 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 to say too that I'm still learning as well. I'm learning every day about how our songs move and are shared and get you know um, get tri you know you know. It, there's there's such a long complex tradition of song carrying on this land, and it's in it's not in any book you can find. You know, you got to go and you got to learn it from your elders and your people that uh, you come from. And so that's a that's a ever, you know, ever evolving process. So I, I never claim to know the final answer, but, you know, uh, there's a ripening to it. I did love your response, though. Like, I felt like it was so um, helpful. You know, because it I mean, it was a no, like it was a no. And I was like, challenge accepted. I am getting in. <laughs> I'm going to become tight uh, with the culture uh, and I'm going to figure out what it is I need to know and be and experience and take in in order to do honor to this art form. You know, and, and I you know, watched you grow. Go ahead. That's a very special response, and that's that I think a, a, a critical importance that that you are showing. Like, th there's a deep humility in that to say, like, oh, actually, right here, it's a no, but I don't know why it's a no. So I'm gonna go and further that relationship and ask more questions. And you know, there's a there's a follow up piece that not I find some people just you know when it's when it's a no, they say, oh, well, okay, I don't, I don't really yeah. understand. Um, you know, you but took I, I think, it's how you know it's presented always, right? Like it mm -hmm. was, and also how it's received. I mean, it's a two pronged thing. You know, you give it to me with love, I receive it because I believe there's love. And mm -hmm. I mean, it's a love, love to people feel love and hurt people, hurt people, right? It, it just, it, it and, and it's a case by case thing. You know, mm -hmm. the wind could have blown another way, and I would have been like, bitch. But it didn't. Like I knew that. <laughs> yeah, it's so true. It's so true. Just catch me on the catch me on the day, you know. <laughs> right. And so I'm like, I mean, I just felt like there was such a richness there that I wanted to be sure I didn't miss out on. And in this arena where we're tackling the issues of race, you know, I do think we have to think that way. When we, we don't want to miss out on the richness of the culture just because we had um, some assumptions that proved to be false. And thank God they did. And thank God the person who set the record straight was doing so with patience and, you know, compassion. You know, and it's just it's like this both sides have to be incredibly patient 
you know, and as I explained black hair for the 85th time, I just mm-hmm. want people to understand that I will do it for the 86th through to the 150th, you know, because I get to be in a forum where I'm asked, you know, at least right. I'm being asked. Yeah. I, I, I never forget about that. You know, it's like a project like mine and, and being an indigenous voice out in this country specifically, um, I take none of it for granted because just one generation ago, none of it was possible. You know, I think about the experiences of my mother and and, and how much, you know, and, and really generations, generations of, of my people that, that have um, been silenced and, and just not, paid much mind to. I mean, the whole, uh, the original sin of this whole country is that, you know, Europeans showed up here and and they thought we had nothing to teach them. You know, like there was, there was uh, um, an ignorance to what we carried within our worldview and within our culture that may not have looked like the intelligence of, you know, Europeans, but was an intelligence unto itself one that was in, in deep relation with this place already for thousands, if not, you know, hundreds of thousands, if not, you know, we'll never know. It goes, the, the date keeps going back all the time, you know, <laughs> each year, actually it's, it's speeding up all the time. You know, we're like, oh, it turns out native people were here for, you know, 10,000 years. Oh, maybe, oh, it was 30,000 years. Oh, maybe 50,000, you know, and it's like, okay, well, how long until, you know, because <laughs> that's one thing that, you know, you hear all the growing up in Fredericton. I love, I love you, Fredericton, but you're tough to be different in. So you hear it all. You hear, you know, oh, why don't you guys just get over it? Or, you know, you guys came from somewhere else. Too. And it's like, enough, you know, we need to, it, it, it was always about respect and mutual mm-hmm. and understanding. And I think um, somewhere we lost that. And, and somewhere we started to dehumanize certain groups of people. And that's a sickness, truly that's a sickness um, that I think right now we have the potential to root out. Um, but trust right and believe now, it's still real. Like, on- <laughs> <laughs> like right now in the next 34 minutes. No, but seriously, I feel like people have been mobilized in a way. And I think that the conversation has the potential to be very raw. You know, it's like, if you have that uncle that continues to use the N word, let's really make sure that we root that out. Like there's a time for repentance where we really need to stand up and walk in a very new direction, like a tangibly purposeful, uncomfortable, uh, inconvenient new direction. And it will require us- Welcome. That's that's that is the thing that we need to lean into, um, because that's where the growth lies. And I think what you know what we're seeing in this last you know maybe certainly within the last month or two is that certain groups of people are not used to feeling uncomfortable, and other groups are very used to feeling uncomfortable. And so you see very different responses. Um, yeah. based on, you know, histories of discomfort in this place. And what I think I mean, is important up to understand- things too, right? Like artists is a class of people that are feeling uncomfortable, but it's in a new way as we see it evidenced in people who have like what they considered security. Hmm. Right, whether it's security in your own ignorance, you know, as we're seeing in the racial ignorance is being brought to the fore, and just the hubris of the bigotry. Mm-hmm. You know? How are you going to be for you, all of us on our phones worldwide, and still think no one's going to come up against you for putting a knee on a man's neck and murdering him in the street, like in front of us all? Like, that they doesn't like, just yeah. have that kind of just total. I mean, that's a evil that takes generations to make. And, you know, I think we tell ourselves that it doesn't just happen, but clearly, you know, it does. Like what Will Smith said, Will, racism didn't get worse. It just got filmed. You know, it's just where 
the the broad public because of social media, because of how we're able to uh, connect with each other and share stories, we're watching all the time. Yeah. And, um, and, you know, I think when people see videos like it's, it's, some people are shocked and, and a lot of people are not because they live this kind of violence all the time. They live um, with, you know, militarized police in their communities and, 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 and they live in fear. And so I think, um, yeah, it is shocking and it should shock us, you know, really. Yeah. Um, also, well, we need to never forget that. We, we, see, we need to never say again. We just need to never forget that for some communities, it's not shocking. You know, because that's Absolutely. a lived reality. Absolutely. And the thing is, you know, the reason why these talks were so important for me was because I have never experienced systemic or systematic racism in my everyday life. Like, I know that it exists. I know that my father worked very hard for that not to taint my life. And so, mm -hmm. therefore, it becomes so much more important for me to speak out because I do want to represent the norm. I want to represent what is possible. Um, when we raise our children a certain way, when we teach them to be servants and not consumers, you know, when we uh, instill in mm -hmm. them a real sense of justice, because justice has no color. Like it is, if, if, it was, if, if, if a knee is on the neck of a dog or a woman or a black man or a white man in the street, not, none of that is acceptable because that is unjust. That is a lack of mm -hmm. empathy. That is an evil that needs to be rooted out, examined, and really sustainably eradicated in a way that promotes healing and not judgment. You know, we are all capable of that. I have kids. I know I'm capable of murder, whether mm. it's running out of own patients or protecting them. I know that I am capable. So I can't stand in judgment unless I'm willing to be part of the solution, right? I can't be like, oh, that guy, that guy, or oh, the system, the system. If I'm gonna, you know, keep acting the exact same way and claiming that it's not complicit. Right, right. And so I think for us, those, those you know, who have people listening to us and platform and, and you know, ears on us, I think we have, uh, I've always felt this, a, a, a duty to to speak uh, in step with, with you know, bodies that look like you, because we represent, we represent in a, in a real way, you know, so that even if, you know, it might not be our story, it's, it's our story, because we tell it with our bodies in so many different ways. Um, I think, yeah, that's, <laughs> you, you, you bang, I, I thought a lot about you in this time. Um, I hope that's not strange to say, but I think every every black every black mother in my life, I, I I took a special, you know, time of focus, and to to send them love and to think about the precarity that they must feel in this moment. To think that you're raising bodies in this world that, um, in an instant, can be dehumanized, you know, in yeah. an instant can be snuffed out like that, um, with with little repercussion, you know. The, the world was watching, and that's why we have, you know, um, the, the murderers of George Floyd in, in jail. Um, we don't have that justice for Breonna Taylor. We don't have that justice for, um, you know, so many other people. And, so many and, other and, and you know, I think, I think, too, about Chantelle Moore here in New Brunswick, um, and a young Indigenous woman who, you know, had a wellness check and, and, and was shot five times and killed. Um, that that is a is a reality that sits heavy on my heart because you know I have I have cousins I have family I have kin that are also you know twenty six year old indigenous women who you know might you know have contact with the law every now and again on a on a Saturday night and you know to think that any one of those interactions could be the end I think. There's a there's a there's a a fear that is palpable, and is 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 it 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 is it is the thing that is holding us down. I I actually don't feel that that you know our our white brothers and sisters and 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 people that are just trying their best and and our allies they're not holding us down. It's that fear 
It's because yep. that, and that's generational. That's that's encoded in in our DNA because we uh, we were bodies on this continent when it was not okay to be who we were, you know, when we were in shackles or when we were placed in um, open air uh, prisons or reserves. And honestly, I know that I walk differently knowing that I was not raised from a perspective of repeating the sins and expectations of the past, right? You, We've mm-hmm. always been, never, our family is, we belong, we've never, like all of these sentences, my, none, no sentence started that way in my house. It was always, whether it's education or a sense of responsibility or service, wherever there is a need you serve, whether there is a question of your belonging there or not. If there is a need, you go there. And it was to the point where I would be, you know, a, an opera singer and the need is people need healing through your voice and that's your gift. And that's my service. Mm-hmm. What were you going to say? Well, I, I wonder, Misha, have you ever felt this idea of twice as good? ta quotes oh, talks a lot. Yeah. Yeah, the the Tanahasi quotes talks about the patron saint of twice as good, and I always love that idea that you know. And I felt this play in my life a little bit, but I wonder for you because you know. No, explain. Also often removing... Okay, okay. I think just that you know, um, when we show up in a room, sometimes we're the only ones, um, and I know that's less and less the case now, but. I think for a long time, and it, and it imprints on our psyche about being the only one and feeling like a representative and feeling like you have to, um, you know, show up uh, in 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 the the most um, appropriate way, like whoever decides what that means. But yeah, you know, it starts to get into that, right? Because um, we do live in these systems of of control and and. And and certain certain ways of being, certain kinds of hair, certain kinds of shoes are not seen as desirable or or, or comfortable yeah, for right? people. So I just wonder if you, if you can. I was explaining to my sons, and we've all agreed that this is how we act in this circumstance. We cannot leave the house naked and not get arrested. Like it's cute <laughs> for a while, but after if you're like. 25 and naked at a park, you're going to get arrested. So it's just, we've all agreed that we're going to be clothed. (laughs) Because, you know, the only thing my five and seven year old want to be is naked all the time. And we live in the country, and that is their natural way. But, you know, if I go to like post, I remember I posted like a half cheek of my youngest son on like the dock of our house on our lake, like, and I got like locked out of my Facebook account. It was like half a teensy little four-year-old cheek. And I'm like, a am like a child molesting pedophile pornography. Like, and I'm like, that's my baby on my dock. And I'm I like, okay that. now. <laughs> I grew in my belly. Like I wiped that. I continue to sometimes like in the, in the name of potty training and how long it takes, you know, and I'm like, how gross is this world that I am a mother loving yeah. on her baby, learning to swim in his little water wings and nothing else. Now I'm not showing like the full Monty or anything, but I'm just thinking half a cheek. How gross must people be out there? That, you know, a mother who loves on her baby can't just put a half cheek up there. <laughs> I just thought, okay. I mean, it's fantastic. But we, we're, we're back into the book of faces, okay? I mean, obviously, we're live streaming. But I almost fell out. I don't know if I want to go back. I don't know. I mean, what I have loved about this time, of course, is that we don't have to go back to, like, awkward hugs and limp handshakes and bad small talk. Like, I think that should oh never God. come back. I never have to like. <laughs> I love no. I, I will say I have a lot of good times meeting people after shows, but <laughs> you know, you're putting yourself 
you are a frontline worker. You are putting yourself in the, sorry, I shouldn't be so flippant about frontline workers. Thank you so much. I know, I know. But, you're you're yeah. not flippant, but you're saying that in terms of we are connecting to the public in a very direct way. And so it's totally. like they have direct access to us. And it's like, when we go to shake their hands, of course, you, of course you don't want to be inauthentic. Of course you don't want to deprive them of their moment. It might be the only time they meet you. And so you don't want to. So they have to not offer it because we can't not take it. <laughs> it. You can tell them right now. Listen, listen, everybody. Just a little space. <laughs> just, and just know that when I'm doing this, I'm actually hugging you. I can't believe that I can't come over there because of the COVID. Like but I'm going to be using but as an excuse to not hug you for like now until the end of my career. <laughs> ever, 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 ever. So, Rays. Twice as bad, to be twice as, twice as good, you mean the rule of two time? I don't know, yeah. I just wanted to sound soundboard off you about it. Um, yeah, no, of course, but I think excellence has always been my aim. And I'm also an right. incredibly competitive person. She's going to win. So whether somebody else is involved or not, or taking something from me, I don't think that anybody can block my blessing because that makes them God. And there is nobody above God. Mm -hmm. So if he wants it, nobody's going to stop it. No system, mm -hmm. no discrimination, no person who thinks that they're in charge, no airline, no border, no tax man nothing's going to stop god's blessing I love, getting I, love this, I love this idea i've been thinking about this a lot lately the idea of just like just don't look you know what i'm saying like if 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 we exist outside of it then we exist outside of it like we give as much power to these these systems of oppression and these 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 you know awful things that are existing yes we need to say that but they are given power by our collective energy and we give them a lot of energy, you know? We give them a lot of energy. We give them a lot of power. We give them a lot of our headspace. We give them a lot of our peace. We give them a lot of our joy. We put them on the throne of our hearts. We give the cycle of news, you know, all of our future and hopes and dreams. We put the same uh, joy and misplaced expectations on our bank accounts. We put all of these you know, tangible and unreal, but like incredibly, they're just, they're just going to be blown away in the wind. You know, one mm. pandemic, you have no jobs, you know, one pandemic and, you know, one whisper in the wind and all of what we thought was so convenient and necessary is up in smoke. Because we realize that we only have, we only had, and we only ever had each other, you know. Yay! Oh, Jeremy Dutcher's name again. We only have, and we only ever had each other, and that's it. The the kind of separation games that we have been playing, you know, trying to um, wield our power over one another is like, it's so. 20th century. I'm just like, enough. <laughs> and I think, you know, it's um, it's a powerful time, I think, for us to to reorient our focus and, and where we're putting that energy. And I think, you know, with this, you know, there's a lot of people going out there talking about defunding the police. And at first it sounds like a really shocking idea. But when you start to look into it, it's it's really just about you know, not not totally taking something down necessarily, but thinking about like, why is one third of a city's budget going into, you know, arming and equipping a certain sector of society with um, the means to end other people's lives? You know, I think certainly there's 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 actors out there that that may not wish us well. However, I think you know. Overwhelmingly, the majority of us are really just trying to get by and feed our kin and, you know, love each other. Um, and yeah. I do believe that. I think that might sound naive, but I really do believe that. And it's I not. It's not naive. I think the majority. I mean, I think we will always be finding new and ambitious and creative ways to establish supremacy and murder each other because we are just self-destructive. But 
I think God's grace is sufficient for all. Like I think it will cover, and if we cultivate those aggressive kindness and fierce empathy and fearless compassion and all that unshakable faith, if we start to develop those things and really see those as weapons against ignorance and darkness, mm -hmm. like if we start to see their value, if we start to herald them in society, that justice and truth, like telling the truth and you know being a leader who can be trusted, when we start seeing, you know, our leaders take a knee while wearing a mm -hmm. mask and acknowledge. If we could just have leadership that could tell the truth, I think that would, for once, for just one. The thing is, I mean, just maybe, you know, and um, it's, should, it's a muscle. We should work out the That's all right. Over and over. Right? You just need to flex that truth muscle over and over and over, and it'll get stronger until you can't live without it. You hear that, Justin? <laughs> <laughs> right, but we have oh. to do it the top, right? You have to turn on the lamp mm -hmm. also because we can't see it. You are absolutely getting dark. It's getting dark. It's getting dark in so many ways. So good. I tell you. No, oh, fantastic. No. You might be. What? But I feel I look even now. that is a little bit better. Yeah. Okay. Matt, what about that? Our people tell us. How's my car scene? Mm, yeah. You're watching the it's car, funny. the old highway in the back. Is the there. back? That's what the back seat down? Do you yeah. get the... the old one that runs the length of the Annapolis Valley, the 101 on the north of, north of uh, Nova Scotia? People that's, that's beautiful, by the way. Activity. And I'm going to tell you this story one more time because. It is the last of these talks. It's not the last time I'll be on Instagram Live, and it's not the last time that Jeremy Dutcher and I will be on Instagram Live and YouTube and Facebook at the same time. <laughs> what I need you to know is that although I live in rural Nova Scotia and have Wi-Fi, it is really not functioning. It really doesn't work, and I pay for it, Bell, calling you by name. And then sometimes to keep my business running, of course, you know that we have to stay connected in order to like know what's getting canceled and what's not happening and also how we're going to keep things moving forward and rebranding and making the people. We have to be able to use the hotspot on your phone, right? Everybody uses the hotspot and then you let it connect to your computer and then all of a sudden, Bell is sending you a bill for close to $3,000 for the Wi-Fi that you needed to cover the Wi-Fi that they couldn't give you at the home, and it's all the same company. So I know that that's some bull, S-H-I-T, but I'm just going to say it out loud because I can't be the only one, and I don't think it's right, and I don't really know what else to do about it but to say it out loud. So I'm... It's blood from a stone, people. They can come for it. There's none there. I mean, I mean, I'm just gonna have to no, get Bell, several. Where you? <laughs> what? Say again. Bell, we're coming for you. We're in the streets. We demand. We demand good service. It's just. I mean, it's so dumb. But it's like I'm so. It's such a specific hole that you can fall into and never recover. Hmm. You know, but. I'm there and we're still talking and we've got 13 minutes left. So I want to know what you're creating in this space, Jeremy Dutcher. What I'm creating in this space right now? The, you know, we've, I think some, some creative people have really taken this time to make their next thing. And I think that's really good for them. And other people, sorry. No, no, I was just saying, like, it couldn't, it doesn't necessarily have to be, like, an actual project. It could be, like, I'm cultivating more peace. I'm cultivating, like, a new, and you were saying, like, artists are taking stock, right? Like, I'm like, oh, this website does need to be redone. Oh, my God, the website? Ooh. Yeah, I know. That's 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 the least of it. But um, there's so much uh, There's so much that I what want to do and so many stories that I want to do. You know, I think um, I'm trying to cultivate, um, I guess, yeah, we were talking about that truth, that, that, that truth thing, 
<laughs> and really living the spirit of truth. You're out of your camera on Instagram. <laughs> oh, sorry, sorry. Sorry. Thank you. Thank you. Nobody mind. It seems like a glorious main that we're missing out on. <laughs> you're right. You're right. What, yeah. It's so good. Oh, oh, it's just stayed up there. <laughs> it's fantastic. Yeah. It's a whole thing. So, <laughs> this is my cultural pride right here. This is working. This is working. The main. She Oof, says thanks. No. Says, thanks, buddy. With a cute top knot. So, you were telling me what you were creating in this space. Yeah, I think. Um, was I telling you that? What was I saying? Oh, I'm so bad with that. I have such a bad memory. <laughs> and I wonder if you're, are you writing? Are you playing? What do you do to engage with music in this space? Are you writing poetry? Mm. You knitting? Quilting? Cooking? Well, actually, I just, I, I was doing some beating today with my mother, you know, and, and I, I know those beautiful beaded earrings you get sported right now. Those are, are those coming from St. Mary's? Those are coming from the St. Mary's North Side of Fredericton. This is Eris Star. Eris Star. That. I have about 72,000 pairs of her earrings. And Eris, you can make me 72,000 more. <laughs> and me too. If you could get some clip-ons. I don't have it pierced, but... Uh... You know, I, I could really support something like that too. Anyway, so I've been beating a little bit, but to be honest, like um, in the last, you know, little while, I've just really been focused on my language, you know, and really um, like, I'll just take a, can I take a quick sec to just maybe explain, you know, for those who don't know, don't you know. Take, take all the time you need, I'm fast. Okay, okay. You know, it's in a really precarious place right now. We have less than 100 fluent speakers left. And, you know, just one generation ago, it was it was the language of every day among our people. So, you know, it's made worse all the time by the fact that we don't really have resources. You know, we don't have, um, you know, there's this curriculum being made now, but nothing existed when I was coming up. Or, you know, so we have this big gap where there's, you know, um, you know, a lot of the older generations speak really well. And then maybe some of the younger ones have some support, but I've been, you know, trying to just create some resources for those who want to learn our language because it's, um, yeah, I mean, a language is not just words. I think that's that's obviously the, the most basic building block of it, but it really comes down to uh, transferring meaning to each other. And, and being in relationship with each other. And so, you know, when, when you take a language away from a people um, through force and, and, and believe that, that it was through force, you know, at the end of a strap, um, they took our language. Uh, and that is, the, that is the history of race in this country. You know, we want to talk about uh, Canada as a, as a melting pot or, or a place where everyone is welcome. And that's a beautiful idea. But we need to understand that we have that pluralist society. We have a society that's open to people on the backs of black and brown people because, you know, uh, we have a history of slavery in this country too, you know, and we have a history of genocide and, and, and subjugation of, of certain bodies. And I think, you know, what I've been encouraged by lately in these conversations is, you know, our white allies stepping up and, and really, um, saying enough is enough and, and being brave enough to have those conversations among other white, like groups of white people. You know, I think the onus has really often come down to people of color um, to, to be brave enough to speak up or to have those co courageous conversations. And I think that bur the burden of that work weighs on people. And I think it, 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 it's coming too much. And I think what is beautiful is now as we are saying that, you know, we're kind of sick and tired. We have this underswell coming up of people that are really willing to step into that role and have that conversation. And trust and believe that people are definitely more willing to listen to people who look like them. I mean, it's, it sounds kind of like funny and basic, but humans are not that complex. 
<laughs> and yet we are the most complex. <laughs> yeah, because our capacity to love and to give and to find creative ways, I say, of killing and establishing supremacy, but we do the same in reverse. When we choose to stand on top of a situation and know that it can be conquered, and that we will succeed and provide a sustainable solution. Like when we can't come, when humans come from a place of victory, when they're given an opportunity to take their full place in society and exist with their brothers and sisters with the full access to all of the rights afforded to us as humans, that's a society that's fully thriving. That's a society that loves its women and raises its children and creates generational prosperity, wealth, justice, and, you know, truth brings prosperity. You don't mm -hmm. have to sacrifice the longevity in terms of a socioeconomic success of a culture. It is proven that when women and minorities are given equal opportunity, a society thrives. We're helping ourselves by creating a, a, a society that acknowledges the sins of its past as a way to heal the way forward. That makes everybody better. It's a good, right. it's good business. So, you know, for the people who are- the I love it, yes. Do you know what I mean? It's like, don't make it seem like we have to be altruistic and poor. Right, right. Like, it, you know, we have to be acknowledging of the fact that some people don't have access to what we throw away. Oh, my God. The waste and the, I mean, it just, I, I still don't understand why we, we don't throw up revolution just based on the inequities that exist from a socioeconomic standpoint, let alone a racial justice standpoint, let alone a gender standpoint. You know, there's, there's, for me, that is the, and, and to nations which have Christian identity and yet, you know, exist in such an unequal, I mean, you know, I, I, I'm certainly not well, you know, you speaking in Christian religion, but. You need to speak to that, go ahead. You know, I really think, you know, this is, it's Jesus in the temple flipping the tables, you know? It's like enough. And I think, you know, along with these conversations that we're having about racial justice, I'm seeing a lot of conversations about about economic justice and well, and, and, and yeah. what that could actually look like, because we have such a terribly unequal system right now. Yeah, over here on... Uh... Instagram, we're doing the two minute countdown. We'll be able to round it out a little bit more with more finesse on Facebook and, and YouTube. But this is the last of the seven talks that I've given on race. We did race in class, music, race in uh, the or on the podium, race in the orchestra, race in activism, race uh, here in Canada. There's a couple that I'm missing, but I had a really great time doing all of them. And I feel like these conversations are just the beginning of course i would love where to do you want to go next of, sure? i would i would uh, well listen we're going to do i'm doing race and collaboration where we're going to announce this wonderful collaboration that i'm doing with a hip-hop artist because i'm the black opera singer and he's the white hip-hop artist and oh my goodness we're just going to have to have an after school special or reality <laughs> television i don't know but we're following it. I, I, what's the most outlandish thing I can do in this space? And this is pretty much what I came up with. I love it. Now, do you have a blessing that you can offer us on the Instagram here in the last 40, 38? Oh, the Instagram people, right? They're going to shut off. Okay. I will say a really simple one. Um, a word of gratitude. We'll leave you in. Um, we'll leave until um, um, help us all in this time when we need it most. Um, great spirit, and be with us and um, help us to speak truth. That's it. Oh, I love it. 
Okay. Back oh, here now. We're back here, man. That was beautiful. I mean, it is a gorgeous language. Can you maybe give me a little breakdown? Because it sounds like there's a lot of syllables doing a lot of things. Of course, yeah. I mean, there there are. It's um, it's 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 a beautiful language that sings, and I think it was so natural to put to music because it's it's almost like a it's a melody within the within the words. Okay, so I'll just I'll, I'll slow it down. So uh, this one is saying no that's incredible. We're going to spend time together. And I'm going to be in front of that text with you. And we're going to have a chance to really, because you know, phonetically, all the linguistic things is my passion where it sits in the mouth, all of that. Oh gosh, I, we we have have to talk about it. There's too much. There's so much that even just like through the process of, of gaining fluency in, in the language, I've, you know, coming like a singer studying a language is like a whole different, <laughs> as, right. as I'm sure you know. It's my favorite thing about this job is the language. It yeah, is yeah. really my, and if you don't love language, like I've started, let me just say it, teaching voice lessons on Patreon. And if you want voice lessons with Misha Bruger Gosman, mm -hmm. Patreon. And what I've figured out, and I, I, I have a very, I, you can imagine, concentrated approach to teaching, very comprehensive mm -hmm. from, you know, how did you wake up? What did you eat? Where's the, you know, beef? What do you plan? What do you want? What are your hopes and dreams? How did you come to sing? Like, I love all of it because it's all the questions that I'm asking myself. But one of them is, you know, when you get down to the language, I mean, that mouth has to know what it's doing. Mm. The least of your worries is pronunciation. Forget the syntax, the rhythm, the giveaways, and the intention. The least <sighs> you need to be doing is pronouncing it, pronouncing it right. You know, and then and then the work. And, and so it's interesting to watch them or watch me know how mu how much work it is. I know how much work it is, right. and it's just like figuring that out for yourself. And it dawns on them like, oh no, this is <laughs> it's way more. I remember that doing all those dictation classes in school and just uh, a classical music yeah. education, it really kicks your ass. And you're either jazzed by it or you're like, oh, really? Couldn't I don't know, I how just... did you feel about it? Did you like, did you come out of your music education and say like, yes, <laughs> like that was the best path for me? I listen, yes, Jeremy, but you know that I'm like, I was never going to be anything else. <laughs> I, I was born an opera singer. I literally came out wanting everything that an opera singer gets, like picked up at the airport, a good hotel and the best music in the world. Like it's not, it's not fair. Favorite fair, Jer. True. <laughs> But I love you, and I'm so glad that we've intersected in this way. And there's such a, a beautiful synergy. Oh, I'm not going to say synergy. Oh. Um, <laughs> it's such a gorgeous be that, be that woman. <laughs> Use it for the best, for the best way ever, for the first time ever. Um, <laughs> so there's such a harmony to your success that I, I love how it is so connected, and 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 your origins are essential to the success, right? Because your, your brand, for lack of a more romantic word, is so rooted in a desire to bring to the surface what has been hidden. You know? And I yeah, just want I really to feel that. that. And there's so many people behind this work. There's a whole community, you know? It's, um, that's kind of the one of the things, you know, that, that's been, uh, hard but maybe not hard but surprising you know is that the 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 music industry and the, the world of performance really venerates the individual and lifts them up and says well look at this special one you know yeah. <laughs> you know and um yeah, you know where sorry what and you're here saying like i represent like this richness this this hidden it's more than just what you're consuming. 
Yeah, and I wouldn't, and I, I would be nowhere without you know these these matriarchs and these women that that held my hand and showed me what it meant to be a song carrier and to and to to be a representative for for where you come from and um, none of that happens in a vacuum, you know. And I think that's why it's so important for us to have you know courageous conversations and to talk about you know equality of outcome. You know, we we might have equality in a in a sense of the law, and that's important. You know, for sure, no one's denying that. But the equality of outcome is, I think, where that's when we're really going to start to bring our gifts together as a, as a human race. Um, is when we can have, you know, uh, people at the same starting blocks, because that's that's the that's the trick of this whole thing. You know, we are we're judging each other like we all started at the same place on this journey. And I think what what you know what comes out more and more all the time and when we start to look at this you know these systemic barriers that that are kind of baked into the cake is that you know not everybody has the same starting block. And there's actually a lot of obstacles in the way on some people's path that, that some that other kind of people don't have to to, to even think about, let alone experience. You know, there's that there's that thing going around the internet. You know, I have the privilege of of learning about racism rather than experiencing it. You know, and I think for certain bodies, that's 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 a real revelation, and that's that's a critical, yeah. And when we think of what we've lived through already in this lifetime, you know, as we end these these chats, as I I bring these to a close, I just want to thank everybody that joined in Jeremy I'm so grateful to you for being a part of this for being the final chat because I feel a very strong kindredness to you and I love that we're from the same town I love that we have made something of our privilege and also reached back and brought the people that Mm. sacrificed so that our lives could be so good and that we could have access you know and a lot of that came through classical music so of course we owe a lot of it to that formation, you know, that allowed us to be as flexible in our artistry as we are. And I just want to bless your house. I want to bless the dreams that you have and, and that all of them would be rooted in the truth that you bring to everything you do and the prioritizing of the rain bring healing to as many lives as possible healing to as many lives as possible for as long as possible thank you everyone love you thank you so much we'll see you next time i'll tell you when